Hey guys, we're at Woodland Park. It's near Seattle and that's where Rad Power Bikes is headquartered. We're getting to check out their new Rad Power Bikes Rad Rover. This is the 6 Plus and quite a few things have changed since last generation. We still have a step through, we have a high step which is set up over there. All kinds of cool accessories that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But the price has gone up on this. I think that has to do with supply chain a bit, but they've also added hydraulic disc brakes, improved motor performance, and redesigned the frame to be more approachable, especially for the step through. If you look at the a battery pack design here, really integrated, actually sunk down into the frame as compared with before, it was kind of positioned closer to that seat tube and kind of a plastic housing versus this aluminum alloy, 7.3 pounds. It used to be 7.7, .7, so really interesting to see the weight reduced on that. Same thing with the motor, it's like 9.6 pounds, and this is a proprietary motor now. So Rad Power Bikes in the past, I think they've used Bafang and they've had some co-branding, and you can still see that with a lot of the other uh, hardware here. So we've got these Kenda tires, but they have some Rad branding on them. They have the reflective sidewall stripes, some puncture protection, nice little upgrades, really custom fenders, a nice like non-branded suspension fork here. And a few things have actually changed about that as well. This is shorter travel. They say about 60 millimeters. It lowers the front end. They don't have to have uh, quite as tall of a steer tube. They have more spacers here. So if you're a shorter rider, you can drop that down a little bit or get a more aggressive angle if you're someone who likes that. I've always really appreciated the, the mid-rise handlebars here. They can angle forward or back to give you a really comfortable body position. I mean, this is kind of an SUV electric bike in my opinion, right? It has those big four inch tires. Okay, four inch wide by 26 inch diameter fat tires. They give you some traction, a larger contact patch on gravel roads like this. This is really a perfect environment for it. Add some comfort if you go off road into the grass and it's bumpy. Well, you got the suspension fork. This suspension does have preload adjust as well as lockout. Same as before, a little bit shorter travel. To me, it was like, huh, am I really gonna feel that? Hasn't been much of an issue so far. So for them to be able to dial in the geometry and give you a lower standover height and a lower seat tube position, that actually allows you to have a lower minimum saddle height. And so a lot of people will kind of keep that saddle real low to the ground so you can put your foot down and stabilize the bike. This bike is 72.2 pounds, okay? I just weighed it. You can take that battery off for lifting it onto a car rack or something. I actually did a video with my dad because he and my mom, they have bikes and they, they always take the batteries off before they load them. And then we, we went through how to position it onto the car racks and stuff. More information on that uh, in some other videos that I've done. But if you end up going with the high step, which we see here, this one's actually 74.2 pounds. Uh, and I suspect that that has to do with this top tube right here. They've still got these awesome 12 gauge spokes. So extra sturdy up here, 135 millimeter hub spacing with a nine millimeter axle. Still has quick release, which is great. You could take that off if you really needed to. Easier to change the flat. In the rear, 175 millimeter hub spacing. Has to be wider and fit the brake as well as the freewheel. Same freewheel we've seen before. 11 to 34 tooth, great spread on this. DNP nickel plated, so it's, it's rust resistant. It's just gonna wear better than some of the cheaper stuff. We've dropped down to Shimano Altus derailleur. Before I think they had Acera. That might be another supply chain constraint. I feel like they, they're they both very functional, but they are sort of like an entry level part uh, for a derailleur. Still has the barrel adjuster. Pretty easy to see. It's not very cluttered back here, and that's because they've, they've upgraded some things with the electronics on this bike. Very excited to see this. Look, there's a quick kind of a disconnect point here, and the power cable now runs on the left side of the bike, and it's tucked between the disc brake rotor and the frame. Very well protected, and it reduces clutter on the other side, and if the bike does happen to tip this way, I mean, sure, we have the derailleur guard, but before that power cable was protruding, and it was like going into the axle right there, and if that ever got bent or severed, you lose the whole motor, which is such a bummer. This is still a 750 watt, nominally rated planetary geared hub motor. It freewheels very efficiently. It's fairly compact, and I think I was saying 9.6 pounds on that. Fairly lightweight, and it, it's pretty peppy. Moving a big, heavy bike like this, where you do have the friction in the tires, it's wonderful to have a motor that is so capable. They've actually increased the torque by 15%, and I did test this going up some hills. If you're starting from the bottom with no speed and you just throttle it, 
you can make it up, but it kind of limps. It's better to have a little bit of momentum going into it or use pedal assist. The pedal assist system here is the same as before. It is a sealed 12 magnets, cadence sensor, very responsive and natural. While we're looking down here, I'm just gonna hit some of the other points here. We got these really wide plastic fenders. We've got this integrated rear light, integrated headlight, gotta love that. We've got 170 millimeter crank arms, Welgo platform pedals, aluminum alloy. I really like these. They give you good traction and just support for pedaling along. Adjustable length kickstand with this tab back here. So if you're pedaling backwards, you've got pretty good clearance and you're able to cycle the chain to do some lubrication or some adjustments. Again, that barrel adjustment that we were talking about before. They've routed the wires semi-internally. You can see they go along the base of that down tube and we've got this plastic shield with multiple bolts. I've seen this style before from some other companies, but they didn't bolt it on. It was just like a plastic fit kind of thing. And this is much more sturdy. And I asked them about that. I'm like, you know, it looks really nice aesthetically. It's a little bit better than kind of the mess up here. But they said, well, you know, we wanted to make it easy for people to replace parts and swap things out, but then still have it look good. And I think that's a good solution. You can see how the wires protrude a little bit at the bottom, but they're pretty well protected by this aluminum alloy guide. So that acts as a bash guard as well as a chain retention device. Gotta love that really appreciate that 42 tooth steel chain ring over there and these wires come out and they sort of spread out a little bit this splitter right here it goes to the rear light which is kind of tucked under here and then up through the fender and and then there's this this open plug right it's just sort of like an end point and I was curious about that I noticed there was another one somewhere up here in the front floating around and they told me well with our new display system we don't have a USB charging port built into the main display anymore. We have this accessory. So that's this thing right here and check it out. This is a full size USB type A, five volt, one amp. So you can charge like iPhones and tablets and all kinds of stuff with these. And you could actually daisy chain them. So up front here, you would connect it right there. You could put two of them in a row. Maybe you've got like one of those portable speakers and your phone for GPS. And then back here, maybe you've upgraded the, the setup and you've got this rear rack and you've got a bag, maybe a, a basket on top. There's tons of options with this. You can see there's a Yep compatible window right here. You can clamp on the side, you can hang panniers like we've got there. And then there's this front basket. And then this is the roll top bag that they've got now. Velcro's in really nice. Nicely. I like that they're, I mean, look at this. This is really professional looking. It's black, but they don't forget about safety. We've got those reflective sidewall stripes. We've got reflectors on the bag. Keeps you visible, keeps you safe. I love that. And one of the cool things about the lights on the Rad Power Bikes, I'll just boot this one up real quick, is that that headlight is actually 80 lumens and it has this light ring like a fancy car. And then there's a focus lens right in the middle. 80 lumens, pretty good. If you do get that front rack, it's, it's, the light is not gonna point where you steer. Whereas by default, it kind of does. See, that's, that's nice, but it's connected to the arch of the suspension fork, so it does bounce a little bit. They've got this nice little heat sink fin on top to help it cool. The rear light, it goes bright when you activate those brake levers. So very cool. Again, just, especially if you get one of the black ones. Now the step through, it comes in white or black. And I feel like they've, they're fine tuning the aesthetic of this. It's kind of understated. It's a little bit more elegant, but we still have these fun orange accents all over the bike. See the little spacer there, five millimeter and the button. So I feel like they've done a really great job with this. The other part of this bike is being heavy, being high powered, having safety. Well, brakes are a big part of that. And that's one of the big upgrades and part of maybe a justification for the price increase here. So we've got these nut three finger hydraulic brake levers with adjustable reach. So you can bring them in a little bit if you have smaller hands. Again, the step through is the right choice if you're a little bit more petite or if you have knee and hip sensitivity like myself, I can just approach the bike, stand over it, stabilize it. It is a heavier bike and so you wanna feel in control. Maybe you got that saddle lower like we have right here. By the way, 27.2 millimeters on that. They do have SR Sun Tour suspension options, which are great. I definitely recommend those. I tend to do that myself. My folks got those as well and so it creates kind of a full suspension feel, but it does add maybe a couple few inches of extra height. So if you're really, really petite, taking the saddle down is probably the right choice. And I just wanna praise them again, like, like the way that these support arms are set up, you can drop that saddle all the way without colliding with the rear rack. We got a built-in handle, pretty comfortable. Back to the disc brakes. 
hydraulic, very powerful, very consistent, the left and right lever. They feel the same. In the past, the right lever, when they were mechanical, that wire had to go all the way back there and, it, and there's friction that would happen and sometimes water and debris would get in there and stuff. So this is a big upgrade. Hydraulic disc brakes are, are awesome. They do a good job and they've still got those large 180 millimeter rotors. We've got dual piston calipers. It's a great setup. I mentioned before quick release in the front, but in the back we've got the 12 millimeter keyed axle slotted and it, it's just got nuts on it and stuff. So the puncture protection is, is really good. One of the cool things about fat tires is that if you lower the pressure, I think these are rated like five to 30 PSI, and you can actually take it all the way down to five, and you can ride through like loamy or even sandy or sort of slushy terrain, and the tire spreads out and it gives you a lot of traction and float. Lots of fun. Again, it feels like kind of an SUV fun platform, but it's actually fairly capable. We've been riding around this park, doing a little bit of off-road. The suspension fork, it is a spring fork. It's a little bouncy. There's not a whole lot of dampening, but it, you know, it saves your wrists and stuff. So between the geometry updates and the brake updates and everything, I, I feel like they're doing great. They still have things like this. Look at that extra long uh, seat clamp right there, collar easier to adjust you're not gonna like hurt your fingers as much and then you know these are the mounting points for the rack and i think this is for like a a rear a frame lock kind of thing we got the derail your guard down here lots and lots of little little upgrades this to me was like oh you know it'd be nice if the support arm for the front fender actually connected to a braze on on the suspension fork but maybe they just haven't uh, been able to custom engineer that and the fenders aren't dragging or anything they're they're doing a pretty good job why don't we uh check out the battery pack because that's just another real highlight on this electric bike got the keys right here insert and when we twist it see it kind of springs up i really like that oh and before i take it off look at that the fact that the key is up high like this same with the charging port i've seen a lot of bikes even premium ones where the charging port's down here right next to that crank arm it just feels like it's vulnerable so i really want to praise rad they put it up there this is very thoughtfully done once you unlock the battery like this there's a pretty cool little charge level indicator built onto it 10 bars used to be five so much more precise battery pack 7.3 pounds and it's kind of shaped it's a it's a grabbable battery it's not super super long like i've seen some of the power tube and other batteries that are a little bit sharp at the end this one feels like it's rounded it's got the plug at the base 48 volt 14 amp hour 672 watt hours so it's a fairly high capacity battery i always try to take this into a cool dry location especially if it's really hot that can be hard on the cells and they're using samsung and lg high quality cells again same capacity as the older battery it just feels like it's more durable and, and yet lighter too that's awesome now this right here this is a really cool accessory you take this and you cover the connector right there so if you're hauling this bike around on the back of your car or rv or something you don't have to worry as much about like dust and debris getting in there i thought that was a really nice thing and look how deep this is it's actually a really secure pocket it feels like they've kept the battery weight low centered yes it protrudes visually a little bit more than some of the really clean integrated bikes but it's still high capacity battery and you get that universal charging point right here you don't have to have a dongle or something like some of the other bikes and it just means fewer things to get lost so i like that here's the usb dongle again and then this is the new charger they've just made the wire orange about 1.3 pounds same two amp fill rate so you know it might take six hours if your battery's completely empty but ideally you want to keep that thing between 20 and 80 percent to really maximize the lifespan if you know you're not going to use it for a while stored at 50 percent maybe just so you don't stress the cells uh, so i appreciate that red's done some fun stuff and i i like the visual little highlights here and there so with that said i think we can go through the display panel because that's another point that's been upgraded on this bike okay so we got the black step through now and i just wanted to boot up the display show you what this looks like much larger like numeric readouts pretty cool and i don't know if you caught that but it actually says rad when it's booting up kind of a little easter egg there starts in pedal assist level one which is fine the throttle is always hot even if you go down to level zero so keep that in mind you can run around on this like a little scooter if you want to you're going to use the battery faster than if you were contributing with pedal assist but it's it's nice they did that some companies they link the throttle output to the level of assist and it just requires more buttons this is variable speed so if you twist a little you're just getting a little power you twist a lot you're going full power so level of assist all the way up to five ten 
charge level indicator ticks. That is great. It matches the battery here. I think that's wonderful. In the past, they just had five and it was like 20% increments. So one block, you could be almost at zero or 20%. And there's a big difference. So this is much, much more precise. And then we've got that little tick at the bottom and that indicates your lights. We have a dedicated light button, um, which is, by the way, if you turn the lights off, but then you brake, it still does the brake light. Like that is so cool. And here is, oh, here we got to turn it on again. There's the headlight with that nice light ring. It's just, I'm, I'm really, I've always been impressed with that. I appreciate it. And then we jump over to the main menu here. We have like the clock, an odometer, current speed in miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And I'll show you how to adjust that. And then Watts. So Watts is like, if you're doing pedal assist or the throttle, you can see how hard the bike is working, how fast you're burning through electricity. The down arrow over here, if you hold it for a second, it actually activates walk mode, which can be very handy on a bike that's 72 and a half pounds without cargo, right? So I'm a big fan of that. I'm glad that they kept it. It's pretty easy to understand. The other menus are accessed by holding up and down. So we go from clock and odometer to trip time and trip distance or trip odometer. So that's really the only thing you can kind of toggle between those two. If you want to clear trip time and you know trip distance, you hold the light button for a little while and it clears those. And then the secret menu is if you hold down and light, this is really cool. We can adjust several things in here. You can change from a 12 hour clock to a 24 hour clock. You can set the clock, miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And then the last menu is actually the brightness. So check this out, if I arrow down, this is actually getting dimmer, which is nice, because at night it's like you don't want to lose your night vision. However, this does not. Okay, so on this side, it kind of stays bright. This has like a smoked plastic cover and, um, you know, I, I don't know how bright, I haven't really done a lot of night riding, but I already mentioned like the, the riser bar here, fairly adjustable and comfortable. These are the padded stitched faux leather ergonomic grips. They're not locking, but they seem to do a pretty good job. And then we've got a little flick bell with a really pretty chime to it. And then the classic SIS big thumb shifter over here. So there's a little bit of reaching going on to adjust the gears, but that little readout window is very intuitive, very easy to understand. So I, I feel like it makes sense and it doesn't crowd the twist throttle the way that little triggers would and sometimes people are less familiar with those so all in all pretty pretty nice cockpit and then this is an optional accessory this is like a little fabric insulated bottle holder which to me is great because there aren't any bottle cage bosses on this bike it's something i always look for and comment on some of the older rad bikes had bosses down here but that was really far to reach and i'm always thinking like you know you got the basket or a bag of course that stuff cost extra but it's an option, you know, you can do it that way. This is probably the best solution because it's just so close. It's right where you want it. It even fastens to the, the spacers on the, the stem base. This is a directing consumer brand. So if you buy it from the website, you end up with a box at your house. It's a pretty big box. And so there's a little bit of doing it. But if you live in certain cities, they actually have rad mobile services. So it's like this van that'll come and they'll drop it off and like get you fitted right, make sure it's adjusted just right. It's a really great option. And we're here in Seattle, which is their headquarters. And so, you know, of course they have a showroom here. They have a showroom in San Diego. And I think there are a couple other cities that they're expanding to. And, and that's really nice. Okay, so we're all loaded up, about to go on a little test ride here. I'm in level two because actually five can end up going pretty fast. One of the things you can no longer adjust in the display is a maximum speed uh, for pedal assist and throttle. I think that's okay. You can actually sort of uh, determine that by being in the lower levels of assist. And I just don't want to get carried away. It is a heavy bike. I'm on a hill, so I intend to do some hill climbs and stuff. And I just wanted to test those hydraulic disc brakes. So, I mean, that's, that's real nice. You know, the 180 millimeters gives you a mechanical advantage as well as a, a cooling advantage because there's more surface area. Really easy to control this bike, even as heavy as it is. Now we got a gravel lot here. So kind of pedal along and listen to that motor. pretty comfortable, kind of upright. Got the light so I can cut through the forest. Definitely hear the bags and the gear 
splashing around a little bit up there. My water's doing great. That's my favorite feature, I must say. But they also have these platform racks and insulated bags and just a whole bunch of stuff back at the site. I do wish I had a suspension seat post, especially filming. I mean, I'm riding with one hand and it's like you kind of feel the bumps, but that's partially because these tires are so full. We were on pavement earlier and wanted the efficiency, the, the rolling efficiency and stuff, so we put them all the way up to like 30. You can drop that down a little bit and get a little bit more comfort. I'm gonna try to do the no hands thing because for me that's a good test of stability. There we go. Not bad. I mean, this is on like a bumpy, rocky... I, I, was, I was not expecting it to go that well, especially with loaded baskets. <laughs> so props to them for for getting the stability. I think they like slacken the, the head tube angle a little bit. Okay, moment of truth. I love to do these hill climbs. We've got the perfect testing grounds. This is a gravel trail, pretty steep. Like that's a, that's a pretty good hill here. Definitely difficult to climb that if we didn't have assist. But let's see if we can make it on throttle power only. I weigh 135 pounds. I'm not the heaviest guy, but we do have the extra racks and some water and everything here. So um, yeah, wish me luck. There we go. And we're making it. No problem. All the way to the top. Hey, what's up, Luke? <laughs> this is pretty sweet. I mean, that it's, it's roughly equivalent. We're at the top of a little hill here. Didn't have to pedal or anything. Probably could see that power meter surging there, the watts on the display. Okay guys, from here you can see the 42 tooth steel chain ring with that aluminum alloy guide, keeps the chain on track. It also protects your pants and your dress or whatever from touching the chain, getting snagged. 11 to 34 tooth DNP seven speed freewheel in the back with the Altus derailleur. I'm gonna pedal along and this time I'm gonna be in the highest level of assist, level five, because I want you to see how responsive that 12 magnet cadence sensor is. Okay guys, here's the trail view and you notice that that front basket doesn't turn uh, when you steer. And again, that keeps it from impacting the momentum of your steering. We already have a fairly heavy front, front wheel and fork. So I feel like it's a great way to go. It gives you more support as well, like a, a higher weight capacity. I'm just gonna ride along the trail. We have the suspension unlocked. This is cool. As usual, I, this is this is a quality bike in my opinion. I, I tend to have good things to say about the company, but I'm trying to hold them to a really high standard because of course they do have the resources and stuff. They tend to have good customer service and they've provided you know everything I needed to look at these bikes, but this is brand new, okay? So if, if you get one of these bikes or if you've had any challenges in the past, feel free to comment on that. You know, I've got the forums back at the website. It's meant to be a space that's open uh, where if you're constructive, you can share your experiences. Maybe you have some other accessories. But there's a lot of cool aftermarket stuff and I always love seeing that from you guys. Please hold me accountable. If there's something I missed or got wrong, like correct me and I'll update 
the website, electricbikereview.com. I have a comparison tool there as well, so you can look at last generation and this generation and determine what you're gonna be trading off. Maybe you have someone in your family who already has a Rad Rover and you're gonna get this generation. Well, you know, your batteries are not gonna be cross compatible anymore. So there, there are some trade-offs in addition to the price. I hope I've, uh, you know, I've done my best covering this. I love you guys. I hope you have fun out there riding and we'll see you next time. Yeah, I appreciate that. This is really fun. Do you do high fives? Yeah, nice absolutely. one. These were fun to ride around. Yeah, I had a blast on it. Honestly, yeah, they grab a lot.